Tenakota Kato, Ko to Hino Korekio Te Moonga, Te Rune Taku Nako, Ko Waikiri Kiri Te Awa, E Mahea Ne Aku Maharahara, Ko Finneran Toko Fano, Ko Peter Finneran Toko Ingoa, No Ototahi Aho, No Otipoti, E Noho Ana, No Rera, Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenakoto Kato. Well, first year, I'd just like to um, so it's a real honour and privilege to be elected to the Royal Society Te Aparangi and um, really this represents a, a huge amount of, of mahi from a whole group of um, past students and, and staff members. So I just really want to acknowledge all of their work as well as the great mentors and collaborators that I've had the, the pleasure of working with over the years. So many of you will not need reminding that, you know, humans, we are um, an, under viral attack. But it turns out that um, all domains of life are under viral attack. So um, bacteria are no exception. And so the viruses that um, infect bacteria are known as bacteriophages. So these bacteriophages, you may have never heard of them, but they're basically found everywhere on the planet and they're the most abundant biological entities. And they're incredibly important for all sorts of processes and can influence things like biogeochemical cycling. And because these viruses are very specific for binding to certain bacteria, um, they can then bind to them, inject their DNA, take over the cell and turn it into a factory for the production of more um, viruses. And then ultimately they will lyse the cell, killing that bacterium and releasing many more of these bacteriophages. So even very early on since their discovery about 100 years ago, people realized that these phages have potential as antimicrobials because they kill specific bacteria. And um, so this is something which has become even more important recently due to the rise in antimicrobial resistance um, that we're seeing. So we need alternatives to the conventional antibiotics. And so not long after I actually returned to New Zealand, there was another pandemic that uh, was occurring and this was a pandemic um, caused by the bacterium um, PSA, which causes disease in kiwi fruit. So we thought we could go out and maybe try to find some phages. We went to orchards, we went to um, ask people to bring in soil samples from their backyard, and we found bacteriophages that were very specific to bind and kill this bacterial kiwi fruit um, pathogen. And so, with work that's ongoing at the moment with Zespri and with um, plant and food research, we're actually using these as, um, we're well, looking at these as antimicrobial agents to control um, PSA and kiwi fruit. But um, this, is, this is all looking promising, but it actually turns out that um, bacteria actually have immune systems that can protect themselves from phages. And um, as shown here, the bacteria are basically fighting back against these phages. And so it's really important if we want to use phages as antimicrobial agents, we can understand how bacteria may resist these antimicrobials. And it turns out to be a lot more complicated than that cartoon. There's in fact a whole lot of different immune systems that bacteria have, and we're actually discovering many more of these um, more and more regularly. But the point being, we need to learn how bacteria can resist or become immune to bacteriophages if we want to understand more about fundamental processes, but also about using phages as antimicrobial agents. So the system of immunity I'm going to talk about mostly today is a system known as CRISPR-Cas adaptive immunity. And this is quite similar to our adaptive immune systems. So it's essentially a way in which bacteria can remember past viral infections, in this case from phages, uh, and then provide a very specific, sequence-specific immunity if they encounter those bacteriophages again in the future. So they have a CRISPR array, which is essentially the memory bank of um, past viral invaders. And then they have Cas genes, which provide the machinery that enables these systems to um, provide immunity against phages. So the first thing that happens is that when a bacteriophage infects a bacterium, this immune system can acquire memories from that invading genome of that bacteriophage and add this as a new memory to this memory bank. What happens next is that this um, memory bank provides a guide that in combination with these Cas proteins will actually recognize um, in a sequence specific manner the um, genome or the DNA of the invading virus if it encounters it again and it will 
chop this up, it will destroy that bacteriophage and it will now protect that bacterium from that virus. So it's giving it that immunity. So uh, my group has done quite a lot of work over the years trying to understand how these new memories are formed. And I won't go into all the details, but just mention that we've learned a lot about the proteins that are involved in um, this um, memory generation, looking at their mechanism and structure, for example. And we've also looked at what kinds of memories um, are acquired, where are they acquired from the viral DNA, and how are these stored into these memory banks. But probably one of the most exciting and interesting things we um, discovered from some of this work was the unexpected observation that these bacteria, these immune systems, sometimes make mistakes. And rather than acquiring memories from the, the invader that they're trying to be resistant to, they will acquire pieces of their own genome um, as memories and provide immunity against themselves. So this actually can lead to what we'd consider similar to autoimmunity. And what we could see is that, in fact, when these cells did acquire these memories against their own selves, this would lead them to target themselves and in fact these bacteria would die. So this got us thinking, you know, if these immune systems are protecting bacteria from these, um, from these phages, but there are these risks of autoimmunity, there must be some way that the bacteria are controlling their immune systems. And so that led us to um, look into trying to discover how these CRISPR-Cas immune systems are regulated. But what we realized was there was actually a lack of good tools to study in a non-biased genome-wide way um, to, to identify regulators. So what we um, developed as a, a fairly recent Marsden-funded project was a high-throughput screen where we could look at single cells and we could understand or identify um, and from hundreds of thousands of mutants, we could identify mutations which influence the expression of these immune um, mechanisms. And what this enabled us to do is to find genes that control these immune systems. And one of the systems that we've discovered over the years is that basically there's um, bacterial um, corridor going on to essentially increase the bacterial defense when they would be otherwise most vulnerable to these phage infections. So why is, this, why is this relevant? Well, if you think about a bacterial population that grows up into a high density, um, if a virus comes into that population, it will very rapidly spread through that population and kill all of those cells. So it's much like you know humans on a crowded bus with um, the spread of SARS-CoV-2 through um, a crowded population. And what bacteria do though, is they actually have um, the ability to communicate or to have corridor with each other. And what they, what they can do is they can actually work out whether they are in a high population density, if there are many bacteria in one location, and therefore at risk of a viral epidemic spreading through that bacterial population. And what we discovered was that when bacteria in these high density populations, they're communicating with each other and they are actually using that information to now increase their CRISPR-Cas um, defenses. So their immunity is basically being boosted. But it turns out that, you know, bacteria are not the only ones with some tricks up their sleeves in this battle between the phages and the bacteria. And the phages themselves actually have genes um, which are essentially immunosuppressants. So some phages have what are known as anti-CRISPR proteins which are expressed almost immediately when the phage enters, uh, injects its DNA into the bacterial cell. And these proteins will actually bind to the bacterial CRISPR-Cas immune systems and block their activity. So the phages are producing an immunosuppressant to stop that activity. And there are in fact many other ways in which phages can avoid or evade these immune mechanisms. And so that got us thinking, are there any other ways in which phages can avoid CRISPR-Cas immunity? What we, what we discovered was what's known as a jumbo phage. These are phages with incredibly large um, structures or morphologies shown here on the left, but they also have very large and complex um, DNA or genetic uh, material in their genomes. But what these phages do is when they inject their DNA, they very rapidly form a nucleus-like structure where a protein shell is protecting their DNA um, during replication. And because their DNA is protected within this shell, what we then could discover was that 
um, this protected DNA meant that the CRISPR-Cas immune complexes were unable to access the DNA and provide immunity. So in this case, the phages were evading these systems. But the bacteria still have tricks up their sleeve, and um, there turn out to be some other types of CRISPR-Cas immune systems that can still recognize other um, viral components that are still vulnerable. So what we're really hoping to achieve by these kinds of studies um, in, my, in my group, which is the Phage Host Interactions Laboratory, is we're trying to understand um, these interactions between the phages and their bacterial hosts. And we'll learn a lot about microbial genetics, evolution and ecology at the fundamental level. But by knowing more about how bacteria can resist phages, we'll be in a much better position in developing uh, and designing or choosing phage-based antimicrobial approaches for um, therapeutic um, settings in agriculture and medicine, for example. And therefore, we hope we'll be able to uh, also help deal with this rising antibiotic resistance crisis. But another thing which comes from this research is actually the observation that many of these immune systems that are being studied have really interesting molecular properties and can also lead to biotechnological tools. So what we um, what we also have seen over the years is that by studying phage immune systems, biotechnological spin-offs have, um, have happened. So for example, if you go back a, a few decades, uh, restriction enzymes which provide protection against phages were also discovered and they turned out to be a really critical um, sort of molecular tool to help cut and paste cut DNA as part of um, cloning. And without them, we wouldn't have been able to sequence, for example, the human genome or, or any other um, sort of molecular biology um, revolutions that happened in, from the 80s onwards. And then more recently, really in the last 10 years, these CRISPR-Cas systems, which I've been talking about, um, not only having this role within the bacterial cells, people realized that, in fact, you can program them to also cut and recognize other nucleic acid or DNA sequences. And because of this, they've actually opened up a whole lot of different um, potential applications within um, therapies and, and also diagnostics, for example, just to name a few. And because of some of these advances, uh, the Nobel Prize was actually awarded last year to uh, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna for their work on, on one of these CRISPR-Cas systems that's been used uh, predominantly. So I think it's just a beautiful example where you know, fundamental work can also lead to um, potential applications of, of benefit. So um, with that, I'd really just like to finish up and again, thank all of the wonderful people who I've had the pleasure of working with um, over, over the years, as well as all the funding um, agencies that have provided support for our work. And in particular, um, the Royal Society, uh, Te Aparangi, um, who've provided um, milestone funding support for a number of the projects I talked about just, uh, just now, as well as uh, Rutherford Discovery Fellowship, which also supported the initial stages of, of building my, my research program. So um, thank you very much. Um, kia ora.